I am wholeheartedly convinced at this point that the entirety of the media has a complete and utter disregard for women. Both sides, y'all are all guilty. And you know what? Come after me, come challenge me. I don't give a shit because it's true. None of these people care on either side. What they do is they push and they push and they pluck their little political pawns purely for, well, political gain. And this whole thing going on right now with Trump's indictment and Stormy Daniels, it illustrates my friends just that. So we are in a little bit of a time vortex today, not because there was no cancel me baby episode last week, but you know, I blessed y'all's feed with a double header, a double feature the week prior, you know, she works hard for the money and the money better treat her right. That is not to be some sort of, you know, pun or innuendo for what we are talking about today. But why else are we in a time vortex? Because your girl here in her little pink turtleneck dress yet again found herself in the eye of the stormy Daniels. I don't know why and I don't know how. Believe it or not, and I have the receipts right here, okay? This is the Playboy I was in, winter 2019 edition dedicated in its entirety to freedom, free expression, free speech. Now, this is like a story time for the ages. You know, it's like your kindergarten teacher with show and tell really thought. So here we are on page five. And here, my friends, we have Stormy Daniels, who is in the middle of this firestorm right now with Trump's potential arrest today. And I'm shooting this on Tuesday. March 21st, the day that this guy could potentially get arrested. And I have to say, this is probably the show that is going to speak most poignantly to what's actually going on in terms of media's narratives and the cultural climate around women versus getting into the weeds and the nitty gritty of what actually happens. Because the truth is, with what I have to say, that shit is irrelevant at this point. Like we are not going to get into the weeds of the politicized nature of Trump and this and that and his history of abusing power. Like we're going to touch on that in a little bit, but we ain't getting in the weeds. Like I said, the outcome today is basically irrelevant. But what you need to know is here's Stormy Daniels in the middle of this firestorm. And it's a big deal because this has basically never happened um, with a you know former president getting indicted in this nature in U.S. Um, history, right? And then here's right under Stormy, okay? Stormy and her tits thunder and lightning as she discusses in her feature. This is in the playbill. So this is where they highlight thought leaders, if you will, or, or the people who contributed in the most like palpable way, I guess, in the issue. And then right under her is little old me for the feature that you all know about who listened to my show called The New Wave, um, which was all about, again, being free and not putting women in boxes. And Stormy's feature speaks to this too. We're going to get to it in a little bit. But what's so crazy about this is the reason that they featured her was because at the time she was already starting to be in the media and this media fodder for speaking out about uh, basically getting hush money um, and, you know, allegedly getting paid to shut up about her affair with Trump back in 2006, right? So um, again, her message that really comes through and comes clear in her piece as with mine is again, not putting us in a box one way or the other and just letting us be in our power and be free and to not judge us and let us do our thing. And oddly enough, that's exactly like what she predicted and what she said here in 2019 is exactly what's happening now in 2023. So so to get to it, okay, yes, she says that she had an affair with Trump in 2006, and then once he started getting closer to presidential candidacy before he was elected, um, she basically was paid off $130,000 to stay quiet about the affair, and she took the money. But she proceeded to go out and, like, Sorry to this NDA, like you do not exist. You are not a reason in our minds to go out and speak about it. Now, we may never know the nitty gritty. She says that 
she was threatened, you know, verbally, physically to um, shut up basically. Right. And bullied, as we know, is like Trump's favorite hobby besides being psycho and like quaffing his own hair. So now the Manhattan DA is they've been investigating this because it's not the actual payoff. I believe that is the problem here. It's the fact that basically they lied about it. So they're going after him. Now, the reason it's such a political firestorm is because like the right feels attacked and they feel like this is just like, this wouldn't ever happen with anybody else. Like how many presidents have done, has done the shady shit, like the nature of men. We're also going to get to in a little bit and how it's like the lefts and the mainstreams, like nonstop obsession with just railing after this guy in all of his orange hues you know what i mean and so that's why like oddly enough not defending at all this guy but like after talking like last uh the week before last i had michael loftus on right who's a huge comic often on fox news i've talked to friends and people in media um you know off the show about this and you know their thing that comes through is like this isn't even about the nitty gritty of what happened, but the fact that like the establishment, the legacy politics and media, or as they call it, the deep state, the swamp, whatever, continuously goes after Trump who represents in their mind, an outsider, a populist, even though his way of doing it is fucking crazy. Um, and like not okay and toxic and destructive in a lot of ways, that's to them what they represent. It's almost like freedom, like not the bullshit and the tired ways of not only culturally, again, like the group, think of what you can and can't say, even though the right is guilty of this in their own way, like DeSantis with your book situation, like I'm talking to you, sweetheart, in the Sunshine State, but like further the the corrupt like politics that it's just run time and time again in this country and like nothing seems to change. I mean, even like sidebar, but the fact that we're looking at 2024, potentially Trump going up against Biden, it just shows you how stagnant politics stay in this country because it's like so much turmoil and upheaval has happened and yet here we are like assholes putting ourselves after all this in the exact same position that we were just in four years ago right so i think what he represents oddly enough in all this is that freedom to break free of that and bring an outsider in from the usual run-of-the-mill corrupt politics who uh, politicians who all um you know, get off to each other all day long while we get screwed, not in a fun way, and they advance, right? But I digress. So at the time, just a, a little context of why it is so crazy heated and politicized and, again, unlike anything that we've we've seen, right? Um, but what was so interesting to me in her piece is she talks about how even then – it's like she was either the hero or the whore, depending on what side was talking. It was like to the left, she was this like feminist icon taking down a president. And to the right, it's like, you're the whore. She talks a lot about the Madonna whore complex, that whole thing too, right? It's like either the woman is like, you know, a friend said to me the other day, she's so funny. It's like, you know, they want us to be, you know, Mother Teresa and like Pam Anderson. It's like that idea or when it's weaponized and it's like, no, you're, you're, you know, the fragile little delicate, you know, Daisy who needs to be protected and can't be like an autonomous, you know, person of your own or you're this just like, you know, brazen, brash, you know, for lack of a better word, um, whore who's to be degraded, right? And disrespected. And what was so... I really enjoyed about it is how she totally owns her power in it. She talks about being one of the most like successful porn stars, uh, writers, directors of all time and full well knowing like I'm here to entertain people. It is my job. It is what I do. And it's what I choose. She even talks about how she's not a feminist, how she's thinks that, and I've often said a version of this too, but how men in this day and age get such a bad rap and get shit for things that they are like, what is going on? Like, did I miss the memo? Like, what is up? She even says in the piece, like, it's not this guy's fault that your great, great grandmother couldn't vote, you know? So she thinks that men are unfairly like getting a lot of shit right now, right? So, which is why she isn't in this like crusade um, that of this, you know, moment of feminism right now that a lot of people feel have you know gone too far um and she also talks a lot about again being boxed right 
It's like, because she's a porn star, she can't possibly, you know, have a brain or be a businesswoman or be anything outside of that. Right. And it's really sad. And I have to tell you, even with this whole OnlyFans experiment and experience that I'm in right now, it's made me, it's opened my eyes to this in a whole new level. Like even in a way that uh, my Playboy feature did not because they're very much in line and very much in, much in sync of the idea of, you know, here I am and like my sexual power and like promoting that and owning that. And here I am as an intellectual. And for whatever reason with the OnlyFans thing, it's, it's, it's a whole other, I'm noticing like vulnerability and um, labels and judgments that people put on you. It's like, I, I, I see it and I feel it. It's like, oh no, no. Like you don't, you shouldn't have to do that. Like, you know, you're a smart, capable woman. It's it, as, a, as if again, it's like, okay, so what is it like? what do my tits take brain cells out of here? Like we can't have them both at the same time. Or it's like, I can't be a self-made um, businesswoman or self-sufficient woman who else actually can, you know, make something of myself and make a name for myself and get what I want. Like it's wild to me. And it's so eye opening how, while I've gotten so much support and how everything in the OF is still on the cancel me baby brand. But so eye opening to me how, um, that there is so much of that still. And even within myself, to be honest, even to be honest with you, before I launched it, I had sat on it. I shot that episode with Glenn announcing it um, from Barstool weeks and weeks before I launched for this very reason. I sat on it for weeks. I was like, what if it cheapens what I do? What if it takes away from this? You know, I've worked so hard at this and really it's, it's such a process and it's so inspiring, like stepping into that. It, it reminded me a lot of what she said. It's like, no, why are we going to let them? Why are we going to let them box us? Because it makes people feel safe. Oh, it makes us feel safe as a society, right? To put people in these little boxes as if you're dignified over here and not over here. Well, I say, screw all y'all, screw all of you people. If you don't want to look at it, it's not for you. Like no sweat off my back. Okay, bye. Don't let the, the door, don't let the door hit you on the way out. Same thing with my show. And it's like, you know what? We could all learn that. It's like live and let live. Back to what really struck me, again, looking at this in hindsight then and now, is how she was so not a victim. She didn't want to be, again, this like crusader after this big mission for all women who are victims. And there are, of course, as we've talked about, I've interviewed them on the red carpet as Me Too was folding, real victims who suffer and who survive, right? Right. And she was not that. She talks about even how her affair with Trump was totally consensual. And even perhaps taking the money and like turning around and still talking about it, like double F you after bullying me and threatening me into staying quiet, like double F you were all choices, like well-knowing choices made in power. Why can't we just respect her for that? You know, and exactly what she said was going to happen. She didn't want to be, um, at the time, well, obviously she didn't want to be the, the, no one deserves to be painted as the whore or this again, political pawn of like, this is what's wrong with women who don't have a solid backbone and do all this and crow. Oh, cause she's a porn star. The fact that by the right, but the fact that she's a porn star is goddamn irrelevant. It's true. She could have been an attorney or aforementioned, you know, kindergarten teacher. She could have been dressing up as Barney alongside Selena Gomez. You don't know. Like it is so irrelevant again. What? Because that, um, disqualifies her or knocks her down a few pegs or makes her not as legitimate. Like, what is that? What are you even implying? She even talks about how, um, during the whole Kavanaugh case, how, you know, she wasn't taken as seriously as Dr. Ford. And that's, what's really sad. It's like, okay, I see. So she's less of a human because she decides to do this again and all knowing in all her power and all her choices for her business. And as a woman, like, make it make sense. Right. Um, but the point being is that she didn't 
she just was like, break me out of it. Just let me be like, I've always been someone who just speaks my truth and maybe a ball buster. And I stand up for what's right. But again, I'm not on this whole thing to bring this guy down or be a savior for all women. In fact, I don't even consider myself, you know, the tried and true feminists that are out here all day with the pussy hats going on. Like that's not even me. Um, and yet here we are. Cause you, when you think about it, that's a lot of responsibility to put on someone. Right. But she makes a point of being like, why can no one just be like, oh, Stormy's cool. Okay, see what she's doing. It's like, right. She even said that at the time five years ago. It's like, we have to jump on these bandwagons and make everything so extreme to yet again, push agendas and be in our favor, a loss upon one way or the other. And it's actually not hurting. It's not helping us. And it's most certainly not helping uh, women at large. And lo and behold, what do we have now? But exactly what she was complaining about at the time and exactly what she was saying was going to happen and was happening is now happened to the end degree. What do we have here? But Stormy Daniels, a political pawn. So before we go into this next segment now of why, I want to tell you guys a little something, something, okay? I want to talk to you about this brand that I'm newly obsessed with. It is called Magic Mind, not Magic Mike. Okay, it might as well be Magic Mike because I'll tell you, it is going to have you feeling a type of way. So this is Magic Mind. I'm going to put it right up in the camera in yo face, like Stormy's boobs, thunder and lightning, as she so named them. I had this company reach out to me. And when people reach you, you know, for potential partnership sponsorships, like you never really know. You never really know how it's going to go. And I was like, let's give it a whirl. So it's this um, company out of Venice, California. And I loved right away their, their marketing and their message because the whole idea, and you guys know I'm a caffeine addict. Like I seriously have a problem for better or worse. Like, how do you think I'm out here telling the truth and breaking it down for you all day? You know, a voice of the people, you know, it ain't easy in a way others don't, you know, cutting through all the BS takes a lot out of a woman. So um, I love it because it's the whole thing is like athletes have hate um, Gatorade, you know, we don't want to be drinking that Haterade. No. Athletes have Gatorade and uh, creators have Creatorade, which is magic mind. So I love this because it is, it's all like, there's matcha, you know, there's ashwagandha. Like the, the ingredients are super clean. You guys know me with Operation Sex Goddess Body. Like I got to keep everything tip top and shake and check, but it makes you, f- you will literally have a pep in your step. I'm ser- I have noticed such a difference. I'm obsessed. Like, it, and it also feels so good not to be so reliant on my coffee, but I have to tell you ever since, and you're supposed to take it consistently. It's, it's a little shot like this and I take it and I genuinely look forward to it now because it's like, I'm going to have a little twinkle toes. I am going to be a little pep in my step. And it makes me feel really excited to take on whatever, like my, I can notice my focus is different. I am on a mission. I have been, I'll have my whole day of working and you know, Your girl ain't got time to kill. Like we are pitching. We are taking meetings. We are performing. We are writing. The work doesn't stop. You know, we are marketing. We are doing all the things. And I have noticed such a difference in doing this and taking this, like, as opposed to coffee, no crash. Your focus is off the charts. Like you would not believe. Okay. And you do not stop. You are like an energizer bunny in the best way. So I'll have a day of doing all this. And then my ass will be at the gym outpacing every muscle head bro. But again, in the best way, like not overdone, but just like a focus, a buzz, um, a pep in your step, but also like a calm, no jitters. Like I said, no crash. So magic mind. So what you guys are going to do is you're going to go to magicmind.com slash cancel me, baby. You're going to use code cancel me, baby. And you're going to get 56% off your first subscription. I promise you, you are not going to grab this. And from one entrepreneur to another, I know how much it takes. Like I know that it takes blood, it takes sweat, it takes tears, it takes all kinds of bodily fluids, okay, to 
make your mark and put your company or your brand or your business out there. And I can truly feel that entrepreneurship from this brand. In fact, when my order was placed, I got a personalized message, literally a video message from the CEO. I think he just thought that I was like another customer. So that's how much it's like the real deal, keeping it 100, how much it means to them and how like, those are the kind of people that we want to support, especially when it's a badass product like this, that is going to make you just be like, reach your potential boys and girls, you know, and get all the things done. So here you go. Magic mind. I'm a big fan and the packaging is awesome. And it's going to give you a time again, like magic Mike, who like this just really gives that a run for its money. So here is now what we're seeing playing out with all of this. And this is why I said what I said. I said what I said, okay? In the beginning about, it's really sad because the media, it just goes to show you yet again, everybody is self-interested, right? But like the media, this is like their only hobby in life and it's their favorite thing to do. Like they are truly exquisite at it. If this was an Olympic sport, they would be Bruce Jenner, okay? Like that's all I have to say because they don't care. They're so concerned with, even if it's at the expense of someone like Stormy Daniels, right? They don't care as long as it pushes what they want to push and get through what they want to get through. So again, what we're seeing is exactly what she predicted, right? It's like the mainstream media is painting Stormy Daniels now as this savior and this feminist hero intentionally, you know, handcuffing this guy and bringing him down in the name of all women or everyone that Trump has hurt. And it's like, let's not forget, she she even says it in here. She says it was totally consensual. Like, I'm not a victim in any of this. Like, is he an asshole? Yeah, but like, I'm gonna be over here doing my thing and calling it how I see it and calling him a big old bully too, because that's what it is. They can't be real about it. Instead, again, it has to be this like, almost like this martyr and the reason that that's so problematic is because I feel like it totally shuts out her responsibility and her power as a woman. It's like all day long, we can acknowledge men and the powerful men and the choices they make. And it's like, this is an example of a woman doing that in all of her power, whether it be a consensual affair, taking money, speaking up about it after, even with an NDA, because she's like, I don't give a shit eat my dust, like eat my thunder, literally. Okay. And you can eat lightning too, for all I care, like have at it. And that is what is powerful. It's like, again, respecting and acknowledging the choices that a full, well, um, knowing women, woman makes on the other end of it. I've said this before, you're hurting real victims because when you paint someone who's not a victim as such, what do you think it does to people who are like, I need to be heard. I need to be seen. I need help. It's not doing them any, any service. And in fact, we've seen how disgraceful all of this lip service has been, um, even times up, right? Like that organization literally imploding from the inside out because we find out they're, they're over here advising Andrew Cuomo, their, you know, political bestie. It's absolutely, it's outrageous. And um, it's really not okay. And that's what we've seen time and time again. It's just not um, helpful for them. And it does them a disservice because again, if you're casting Stormy Daniels in the light and grouping her in, I've literally seen there's a new um, MSNBC, this big opinion piece talking about this, how she's the face of it. She's the savior. She's, she's the face of all these women who've alleged Trump of accusations and this and that and his abuse of power. It's like, how are you going to put her in the same it just doesn't do them um, service. And like I said, on the whole, women like Stormy Daniels who are in their power and, and taking actions accordingly, it bumps that down too and discredits that too. Now on the other end of it, we're seeing, sadly, it's what I said earlier, you know, call it the right, call it Trump supporters, call it the other side of it, whatever you want to call it. 
acting absolutely disgusting, like animalistic behavior in the way that they're treating this girl. But they'll play up, oh, it's a porn star. It's this. So then she should just be discredited and not listened to as if she shouldn't be taken seriously. Like as if to push this thing, it's like, don't believe her. Don't listen to her. She's just smearing Trump. Trump is the good guy. It's like, uh-uh. Whether it be people in Trump's team or writing her off, oh, it's a porn star. So she deserves this, this, that. It's, it's literally appalling. Now- I've seen, I've been following Stormy and how she's been tweeting and, and dealing with all of this and the misogyny and the, the treatment that she's been getting on there is absolutely vile. Now I want to set the record straight on this because I have talked about this before. In fact, I even talked about it with um, the Atkins women, right? A couple of weeks ago. And I want to set this record straight, straight as an arrow honey, because I'm fortunate enough to have an audience and a group of men, thousands of you who give me nothing but respect and courtesy and dignity and cheer me on. Now I am a woman as a woman and really I'm fortunate and I'm really lucky for that. And not all women can say that, right? Stormy Daniels, perfect example, because she has her line of work, she deserves being called all of these foul names um, and being so degraded. Nobody deserves that. Nobody deserves that. And shedding a light on that, like you guys who listen to my show, you, I want to give like a hats off to you because you are the example. You're the gold standard. Like that is how it should be and teach it to everybody else and walk the walk. Really, you guys are the bomb.com because all of these assholes who think that they're justified in treating a woman like that and speaking like that, you're the problem. You're gross. And that's why even when I've spoken out before about, you know, when it comes to me too and all this, like women making choices and having the wherewithal and maybe not going to an executive's um, you know, hotel room late at night, you know, why to protect yourself, right? To protect yourself because chances are it could end up not going well, being uncomfortable, not being appropriate. Right. But again, that's not to say that if it does, any of that is by means your fault. Same thing. It's all tied into the same thing, whether it be being a porn star, whether it be what you wear, right? I remember covering Amber Rose's slut walk in LA and again, it really like people wearing women wearing all kinds of things, because at the end of the day, what you decide if you're it's like, oh, the idea like she asked for it, like no one is ever asking for dick, especially yours. And that's what is something that we really need to. I'm almost glad that this is happening because it's shining a light on that in a huge way on the main stage, like. And the way that Stormy Daniels is handling it is with such class and with such grace and like throws it back at them. Like if they'll be like, you're an irreverent C word, she'll be like, okay, or irrelevant C word. She'll be like, okay, why are you tweeting at me then? You know what I mean? And I can't imagine that that's easy for her. I imagine that that cuts down in some way, shape or form. But again, the idea of degrading or disrespecting a woman based on her choices, you're disgusting. Like you are actually the problem and you can tune the F out of my show, baby, unless you you know, change your tune. Cause that shit, you literally are the problem. That is unacceptable. No matter what they wear, what they say, what they think, who they're affiliated with. Uh-uh. No, it's not going to fly here. And if so, you canceled. Um, but that's where it's shed light, um, on all of that. Meanwhile, <sighs> You know, again, how these are both uh, two sides of this pawn issue. And I saw this as Me Too was playing out and first hit the scene. I saw it on the red carpet. Again, with everybody um, either giving lip service or pushing something or saving their own face, right? If that's what it meant. So E, the network was a perfect example. I wrote an op-ed on it at the time. I was like, you guys have all these issues going on with this allegation and this pay gap and this and this in your own company. And you're going to have the balls. You are literally going to have the testicles to come out here dressed in all black, talk about solidarity for women and not even acknowledge what's going on. In fact, a couple celebrities at the time, like Deborah Messing, shout out to you, called them out on the red carpet and had the balls because they were like, um, one thing's not like the other. And they literally, it's lip service, right? Just to make it look like, but it's like, what are you really doing? 
like I said, time's up exploding because they were caught. They were caught in their tracks trying to help Andrew Cuomo out. Disgusting. Even my own experience with Morgan Freeman, like making this guy a political pawn on the other end of it too, because, or me in a way, because they accused him from my really fun interaction with him. If you guys know where he was joking about my ripped up Abercrombie jeans, uh, the media tried to paint me as, as him as a predator and me as a Me Too victim, right? In that case. And it's like, let's just get to the truth. Like none of this is truth. It's all to push your own agenda and you guys are all pathetic. Even like Rose McGowan, like Rose McGowan was like the me too face of it. Like the true one who was willing to die on that hill coming out about Weinstein. And the times I heard it in Hollywood, the times were up organization because she was so outspoken. Like they should have been her poster child. And instead she would speak up about Cuomo. She was shunned. She would speak up about this. She wasn't invited to meetings. Like this is where they pick and choose based on what's best for them. Like, this is not the babysitter's club. This is not Girl Scouts. This is a serious issue that obviously permeates through our culture. And in the end, with all this, whether it be, you know, the mainstream painting non-victims and, you know, self-assured women as these crusading victims, or it's the other side having the 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 audacity to insinuate that any woman who is, you know, shows her body or performs in a certain way is less than or is less than human. None of that is okay. And even now I see like, as she's going down this path, she's even picking like a little bit contrary to what she was saying here in this Playboy piece. I feel like she is kind of going like riding the savior train in a way. And even that it's like, you know what? If that's what's best for her at the moment, I don't know that I would necessarily do it, but more power to her. If that's what she wants to, to decide, just like she decided to take the 130K because perhaps she was being threatened, you know, perhaps she did want the money and then turn around and be like, F you, dude, I'm going to blow your ass up anyway. Those are her choices, choices from an, you know, a knowing woman who deserves to be respected. So in the end, I feel like this all just, perpetuates this big problem. And it's what that I what's what I talked about in Playboy at the time. The problem that our society has with self-interest, number one, and putting people specifically women in these boxes right? Whether it's because they, again, whether it's for political gain, social gain, it's what they think is right or righteous, or it's what they think makes sense. It's like, I've noticed through this whole journey, we are just so shackled by these societal expectations of what we should or have to be. And it's like, why, why can't we all just be free? And that's what I really wish not only the media, but our culture would do. It's like to all of you, stop it. You all need to stop. You know, we're not the hero or the whore. We're in our power making our own decisions. And that is what is real. That's the hill to die on. And that's what will actually give women the dignified respect that we deserve in the media, in our culture, and actually help us move forward. Thank you. And amen. By the way, go get your copy today, Amazon.